Hey guys, here playing Palana Foods. Palana Foods? I'm not sure how to pronounce it. If anyone knows the correct pronunciation of this, the two little accents on the A, post in the comments, because I have no idea if I'm saying it right or not. Against Taylor, you got a pretty decent hand. Um, we're trying a build without Future Perfect in it and just playing a whole bunch of twos and ones instead. The Future Perfect I haven't been as happy with recently for a couple reasons. One being. Uh, film critic is a problem, medium is a problem because you end up paying Psy games over and over again. Noise is a problem because you end up building Future Perfect having to play Psy in the archives over and over again. Just like in general, the amount of value I'm finding from that Psy ability is, is less than before. You still get the save deck slots, but you can do it with food as well. So we're going to try just playing a bunch of twos. This new agenda corporate sales team, very strong. $10 is a lot of money. Normally a 4-2, you end up paying a lot to score it, and you can get places where you just can't even score because you spend too much money. Happens a lot against headlock decks in particular, where you're like, well, if I spend four clicks and four dollars to score an agenda, I will be just dead broke. Whereas this trickles in a little bit at a time. Um... So it's, you know, that little bit of money you need to keep to keep rolling your game after you score it. So I like this quite a bit. We're going to play three of it in the deck. Keep me honest, checking the Agriplex. Alright, so we're going to draw. She's going to draw, and... Cards for everybody. So we put a play right now. We've got seven cards. We kind of, you kind of have to. Cards for days. Should be able to get money almost every turn out of Haley. She can't really not draw most of the time. Some turns you can do like play, 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 and then draw the next turn a bunch of times, but usually they're going to draw every turn. Not a ton of money over there, so not a lot of eagerness to come attack this remote with two ice, which is fair. Really, Haley's swinging for the late game where they can lock you down with some stealth stuff and get R&D lock. We'll see how that goes, because if we get enough Nisei tokens early, then it's really hard for them to come back in the late game against the power of Light Caprice plus Nisei tokens. HQ run here makes a lot of sense. We're, we are drawing extra cards, right? So we're going to get agendas into our hand more quickly. Especially if she thinks that this is a Caprice in the row, we're going to put an agenda next turn. Yeah, like, tough call here. Do you trash this Jackson with your Ghost Runner credits? And you can pawn the Ghost Runner next turn, but if she doesn't trash, she can just pawn the Mem ship. You'd probably gonna let, let that go, I think. We're going to draw extra cards with the Agriplex anyway, so we're not going to be, like, dying to have card draw. And try to get lucky in R&D. No luck. We get extra card. Uh, we get a dollar from them drawing a card, and we'll just score this out right away. I don't think we're gonna ever want two of this, so we'll throw that. We're in pretty decent shape. Yeah, face checking against Jinteki, it can be quite annoying. More so with HB, which is something I like about Jinteki. 
Like a random Cortex lock right now would have actually straight up killed her. And Kamainu is pretty bad too. So Haley, with not much money in the pool, kind of has to uh, ah. just sit back. So yeah, it makes sense to pawn the uh, mem chip here. Not going to need two of those. So we'll think about our next turn. We could put this in the remote. Put this, one of these two. Because there's not much in the way happening here. This It doesn't look like a great draw from, from Haley. No cash has come out. Oh, speak of the devil. Seems legit. I think it's gonna be really good for us this game. Like the extra dollar is gonna let us just slam agendas very frequently. And okay, so what are we gonna do this turn? We've got two credits from Haley with the stealth. I think we should jam. So nine is going to be not enough for all three ice. We're on 10. Is that any better? Yeah. Okay. Let's go with this. So with like this agenda suite, the advantage is that there's so much upside for scoring, and then the downside of them stealing it is like two points blank. So you can play more aggressively with your four twos than you would if you were really concerned about them getting three points or something. I kind of hate scoring blank agendas that don't help me win the game. Whereas between the Nisei and the and the uh, corporate sales team, if you score agendas, you're like way ahead and getting into this like, kind of snowball effect. So we're just playing your check game here, making Haley have breakers. Okay, Imp comes out. We may just have our hand get pillaged here. Just definitely a reasonable play. Here it comes. With the extra card draw from the Agroplex, we're, we are going to be okay with uh, getting a couple things amped because we're going to overdraw more anyway, but it's still a nuisance if they're able to get the agendas by imping the non-agendas. Hmm, pad campaign. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you can you can imp it just to clear another card out of the hand. Leaving it's fine too. Like if she wants to kill the Agroplex, I don't know if she'd rather this be alive or not. It's tough for the runner because they kind of want that card draw from it, but also it's draw for me and money for me. Okay, can I just pick on the R and D. It's wide open, so our points to be had. So Eel bites the dust, that's too bad. That is a great ice. But good news is agenda out the door. And we're gonna start getting money for days. Huh. How 
half to discard, so there is some downside to having too many cards in your hand with this. It's hard to play them all out. So this starts ticking. You'll see, like, throughout the game, this sales team is going to give us enough money to just push, push, push. Like, really, a Netrunner, like, clicks are, like, the most crucial resource. You can't get more clicks except as with some very special tricks. So being able to, like, push the runner to say, go faster, go faster, instead of letting them have time to set up is really quite strong. I think this is our fifth turn, and we're already on three points. Or four points, sorry. A lot of times, RP wouldn't even score anything until, like, eight to ten turns. Yeah, it's not a Nisei. But I think this is actually better than a Nisei in this exact scenario, because I don't have any money cards in hand besides this pad. So having, like, ten bucks is going to let me push agendas out pretty quickly if they don't all get taken on the way there. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> nice. So this imp is coming out fresh and we get a Halion stall on top of that. Look at the value. Oh, Crick, we hardly knew ye. <laughs> this is actually decently taxing against Refractor, even on like this other central, because it's still a buck and stealth. So when the stealth gets low, they can't run it over and over again. It's her last click, so it's probably it's probably gonna get imped. Could be a bug, not positive. Now, there's a way to set the counters on that imp, and how does that work? Uh, Well, let's just not worry about that. We'll just remember that one of them is already gone. All right, so we get our money, we get our draw, and what are we gonna do on 10 credits? We're gonna just, we're gonna just slam agenda, or possibly not agenda, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Now, is this pad gonna be good for us? I almost think the game will be long enough that it's good for us. I think we just money up here. Make sure you can protect this agenda. I haven't figured out how I feel about this card yet. Like, I definitely like the cards. <laughs> Poor Aesops, he pawned himself. Uh, it does say another of your installed cards, so it actually shouldn't let you even do that but I guess it's not implemented properly. Should report that on their bug tracker. So if you ever find bugs in Jinteki, just go to like uh, like search for GitHub and you can, you can find the bug tracker. If you report stuff, they fix it pretty fast. They're pretty good for that kind of stuff. Because they usually just don't know if nobody reports it. 
it kind of just sits there and goes unknown about. Alright, our HQ will continue to get imped. Let's see a fast track. Yeah. Kind of wanted that one. I think fast track is a great choice when you have four twos because fast track and solid advance is a good turn. Whereas fast track's a lot worse with the 5-3 because it sits in your hand for a turn and doesn't do anything. Or you put it in the remote for two turns and then it's got really vulnerable there. Nice, Peddler comes out. Gonna be able to install, maybe on my turn to get an extra install. This is the Haley trigger here because this Ace Obscure Fuffle. So I'm kind of be between playing like assets and between playing just more operations. You could play like Restructure or Subliminal, Celebrity Gift. The pad is kind of good against Shaper because they can't really afford to trash it most of the time. In this case, there's an Imp, so it's a bit of a special case. Oh, this is actually NP now because one token is gone from it. So getting a buck off the Palena, getting a buck off the corporate sales team. It's a beautiful thing. Now it's turn seven and we're on match point. Like we've just really not given Haley any time to get RDI set up to get expensive stuff like that rolling. So that happens on my turn effectively. And then she can take the money off and she can pawn it on her turn. So now there's some money coming in, eight bucks. Two breakers. So the question is, can we ram through the Lost Agenda without having a Caprice, or do we need to wait for a Caprice to come up? Mm -hmm. We do have a decent chunk of cash. We've got an ESA token, so we're going to require two runs on this server. That's pretty good on its own. So this tree pillar was on our turn, so the Haley ability is fresh for her turn. That's how that went down. Imp is online again. Cut the hand. No, not the R&D for two accesses. Okay. I'm not sure why it does prompt you in this case because there's no upgrade, so there's no uh, there's no choice on it. I 
And because it's a multi-access, they're going to ask even if it's no choice needed. Trying one copy of Shigeru just because it didn't have any barriers. I'm not really happy with Baku these days. It's one card for Faust. Kind of unexciting. So we'll try this nine cost thing. It maybe it's too expensive. Because I want to spend my money I do get on scoring agendas more so than doing whatever else. So what's the line here? Do we, um, it's down to three credits, it's gonna be on five credits, maybe a pawn puts to eight credits. There's no lady in sight. I don't know what the best line is here. Maybe double icing R&D is better, given that the R&D interface is there. Um, not sure. We really only played one hedge fund and the Plana this game, and we still have enough money to to go to go with our business, which is a pretty cool effect. I think this idea is just generic enough. Like every deck needs money that you can build a lot of different things with it. So we're going to see some kill decks. We're going to see some fast advanced decks. We're going to see some glacier decks. This I'd say is more of a rush slash glacier deck. There are three Caprice and Batty in there. They just haven't come up. Um, okay, so I guess this is good. We're going to see the Crick get rezzed. Spending a stealth, spending a buck. There we go, so that imp is going to wreck our hedge fund. Goodbye, sweet hedge fund. Actually, we're going to be okay because of the corporate sales team. So we'll see two accesses here. We should be okay, I think. Knowing where the points are. And 
the thing with playing no three pointers is you're guaranteed that each player is scoring four. I might still try to put a food in, but playing NAPD has advantages. People don't really play around NAPD that much these days. Yeah, that's uh, that's not a mistake. She could have pawned maybe the mem chip because I think five of you would have been enough, or she could have chipped out the cash and sold that. I think that's also an okay line. Ah, there's our caprice and batty getting mauled. I mean, on the plus side now, Craig is a must break because now these can come back into play. Yeah, I think pawning something this round would have been good, because if she can take any APD, that's a good advantage. So there it goes. Um, this is quite a fun little agenda these days. If you can get rid of most of like a wild side player's deck, or even if you hit their levy in the trash, it's just like crippling for them. So I'm happy to try two of these, see how it goes. You could, otherwise you could play the clone retirement as a 2-1. one be decent too, but I think this is probably better for the effect. We'll, we'll try both ways and see what happens. Thanks for watching.